Mike DeCorsi <laughs> from the Sporting News with us. It had been in the oven, man. And I was like, wow, it's just too brutal. And then that storm came through last Friday or whatever. And it was like, it's been heaven ever since, of course. <laughs> but have you, what, have you been doing anything to enjoy the weather? Do you get uh, get out? I know you're not, you don't play golf or anything like that. But uh, tennis, anything? You do anything like that? I take walks sometimes. Uh, I have I I did not gotten that opportunity yet. You uh, and you and you and Rick Bozich. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I used to run, but uh, my back doesn't allow that anymore. So I'll take Ooh. I'll take walks uh, and and enjoy the weather that way. But I have not had that chance yet uh, uh, because I had the uh, we we I'll tell you this real quickly. We have these two birds. And we have this fan, a ceiling fan, but it's not like a normal ceiling fan with the blades. It's more contained. So these two morning doves have come three times to our house and built a nest on top of the fan and raised their baby birds, and then they take off. And then you kind of have to clean up after that. And so that was my assignment over the weekend, the cleaning up. We, we're delighted to have them. We call them Jack and Diane. That's their name. That's the birds' <laughs> names. Uh, and... Uh, and that's the third time that they did that. It's it's really cool uh, watching you know watching the birds uh, grow up. It takes about a week, and then they're ready to take off. Uh, uh, but uh, but I, I, it's not as cool when you have to go clean up after that. Uh, no, they're very <laughs> messy. Um, Herbal commenting back about Purdue that we and we mentioned this that they have to come in with. Final Four expectations. I, I, I think anything short of a Final Four for Purdue has to be utterly just incredible disappointment for a couple of reasons. Number one, they've lost to an average of a 14 seed the last three years, but they have not been to a Final Four, but two times in their program history, the last coming in 1980. Right. And this team is without question beyond Final Four capable. They are certainly uh, you know, yes. some teams that you're like, okay, well they can make it. No, no, no. This team is beyond capable. They're they're definitive that they should be there. Not being there, something is going to have to happen. Well, I mean, the first thing that they have to do is they have to take care of their business, team construction, role definition, all of that. They have to get that right uh, going into the year, and then they have to be ready to start earning a number one seed from the beginning. And and the reason I say that is because if you want to make a Final Four, for instance, you're you're a Midwestern team, Kansas is a Midwestern team. Well, somebody, like you don't want to be in the same region as they are. Uh, so you have to make sure you differentiate yourself, whether it's from Kansas or just you make yourself too good so that you're both number one seeds or whatever. So that's so that so that part of the regular season is really important. You have to you have to excel in the regular season. And then when they get to the NCAA tournament, and they will, I, I believe they have to approach the tournament, especially the early rounds, with a different attitude. I, I think they need I, I've said this uh, multiple occasions, they need to enter those games against teams like Fairleigh Dickinson with a sort of competitive arrogance that was missing from their trip to the tournament last year, uh, that was missing clearly from their game against St. Peter's uh, in the Sweet 16 two years ago. Uh, because if you watched Carolina, Carolina went into their eight, Elite Eight game against St. Peter's and said, you know what, guys, this is not happening today. Forget about it. We're going to take care of you. Five minutes, you're done. It's over. Nice having you here. It's a really cool run. It's over. And Purdue didn't do that to, to St. Peter's. And then Purdue repeated that particular mistake. You have to take every team seriously. But you don't have to allow them to in the game. You say, this is this, you know, this ball's going to Zach Eady the first five times. It's going down your throat. We're dunking on your heads. And we're going to make it obvious that you can't play in this game. It was really cool that you made it here. But you can't play in this game. You're not good enough. And if you don't do that, teams start to believe that they are good enough. And they start to think, hey, how cool it would be if we could pull this off. And that that's what happens. And, to, and sometimes coaches are a little reluctant to change what they do. 
you have to coach every game in the NCAA tournament like it's the last. Not like, hey, we'll just do what we did, what we caught, what we, you know, what got us here, and we won't change. I, I think back to the first 16 over one upset, which was Maryland, Baltimore County, UMBC over Virginia. And that was a game in which uh, Virginia was, first, first of all, diminished by injury. Uh, DeAndre Hunter, one of their top players, was absent for that game uh, because of an injury. And then UMBC came out uh, pretty confident. They started making shots. Virginia's in a hole. And, you know, Virginia as a team has always been a half-court defensive team. But Maryland-Baltimore County wasn't, couldn't handle, even without DeAndre Hunter, the superior size and dynamism of Virginia. On a few occasions, they turned over the ball in the backcourt. What Virginia should have done relatively early in the second half was say, let's just press these guys. They're not going to be able to handle it. They're not going to handle us, and they're not going to handle the game. Let's press them. Let's get the ball back. Let's win, and then we move on, and we'll go back to being Virginia in round two. But we got to get out of round one to get to round two. And they never did. They didn't press, I think. If I remember correctly, I'd have to look. I don't think they pressed until the final five minutes of the game. And they were behind double digits pretty much the entire second half. You have to you have to change your approach if it's required. You have to be willing to change your approach. What we've done to get here doesn't matter anymore. It's and this is this is what some teams like uh, North Texas took advantage of. They they said, look, we're just we're we're and I use this analogy all the time, and I hope people aren't tired of it. But you're used to seeing fastballs and sliders as a as a high level team in the NCAA tournament that that's played in a high major conference. Everybody you played against throws fastballs and sliders, you know, uh, metaphorically. And then you get into a tournament like this, and North Texas says, "Well, we can't beat Purdue." playing straight up, they're going to run us out of the gym. So we're going to put one player behind Travion Williams. We're going to put one player in front of him. And we're going to dare the player we drop off to shoot the ball. And if that player makes shots, we lose. Okay, well, that's the way it's going to go sometimes. And if we, if that player doesn't make shots, we have a chance. And that didn't happen. Sasha Stefanovic didn't shoot well against North Texas. And, and Purdue winds up in a close game and they end up not executing in the end and North Texas moves on. And that's, so you, ha you have to be ready for that and ready to deal with that and have, and have your own knuckleball, uh, so to speak, if somebody throws it at you. There's a great point that Sean brings up. So at what point do you question Matt Painter's ability? Uh, he says, similar to Kentucky, at what point are you failing with the best players or versus just playing lucky. You know, Matt has his system that he's been a uber successful in the conference. He, he wins a ton of games uh, and, and is, is successful in, in that regard. But Purdue as a whole on the national scene, their success is just not there at all. Um, well, how, so how I, 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 will, I, will, I will quarrel with that to some extent. Um, first of all, has there ever been a coach – in college basketball, who has had worse injury luck. N Trending toward a number one seed late February 2011, Robbie Hummel at Minnesota blows his knee out, and all of a sudden you're not trending toward a number one seed anymore. You're a completely different team. Uh, the, the, uh, the circumstance in 2018, when Isaac Haas uh, is pulled down onto the floor, uh, the, or the origin of the hook and hold call, they didn't have it then, but it wouldn't matter anyway because it happened. He breaks his elbow, and now you're an entirely different team in the middle of the NCAA tournament. So that's two circumstances there where they could have been a Final Four team and, and wound up not being uh, because, of, because of injury. Uh, there's the fact that uh, they were one free throw away, one free throw away from clinching more or less an opportunity to go to the 2019 Final Four against the eventual national champion. Ryan Klein makes one free throw, and they go to that Final Four almost certainly. Instead, they wind up in an overtime game because of a very fortunate bounce 
uh, and some good decisions made under pressure by Virginia and some not so great decisions made under pressure by Purdue in those final seconds. Uh, and they wind up giving up a tying bucket and they, and they, and they lose an OT. Uh, so no, I don't, I, I question particular, as I have right here, I've questioned particular, uh, decisions or tactics or lack thereof in certain circumstances. Uh, I, 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 I thought that last year they needed to go into Fairleigh Dickinson with a different attitude because of having seen what Carolina did uh, right after the, the Boilers played against St. Peter's. And Carolina just went out with a completely different approach, that it was going to be over in five to seven minutes and it wasn't going to be a 40-minute game. And that's how it turned out. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I thought that they needed to go in against Fairleigh Dickinson and do the same thing that, that Carolina had done and not what they'd done themselves against St. Peter. So I'm willing to question that. But he's one of the, or if you're going to ask me if I'm going to question his ability, my only question about his ability is how high on the list of the best coaches in college basketball he is. Top five, top 10. I'm not going much farther than that. He's that good. How many times has he, has he gotten to those, to those levels? With with I think his his highest recruit ever was Trey Kaufman Wren. Uh, they don't get the five star guys at Purdue. It's it's the it's the nature of their program. They don't get those guys. They get the next best guys. It, another thing that you that you have to to look at and 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 admire about uh, about Matt Painter and the Purdue program. Everybody else is oh we got to get these transfers and we got to do that and. And we and, and and we know we're going to lose X number of guys after this year. How many players transfer out of Purdue? It almost never happens because their players want to be in that program. They understand how well they're being coached, and they and they and they want to be there. They want to play for Mac. I think that's something else that needs to be valued in this era. That continuity of, of talent. It, it's it's college basketball the way so many people say they want it to be. So no, the fact that they've had a couple of rough runs in the NCAA tournament, I, I'm not questioning him as a coach. Questioning decisions or whatever, yeah, okay, everybody's open to that. You can question things John Wooden did or Coach K, uh, but I'm not questioning him as a coach in the little, like I said, he's top five or top ten, and the lowest I'll go is probably – no, I'm not even going there. He's he's one of the ten best coaches in college basketball, and uh, and you can figure out who all who else fits on that list.